Good day. Michael Bender here from the Center for Fiscal Equity. These are my um, comments for the record in video form for Ways and Means on Nowhere, Nowhere to Live, Profits, Disinvestment, and the American Housing Crisis from July 13th, and Senate Finance, the Role of Tax Incentives in Affordable Housing, July 20th. Um, so the, the uh, we'll, we'll start out with, with the housing market. Building scientist Belinda, Belinda Carr highlights why the current economy is similar to 20 to 2005. In a recent YouTube video, the link will be in the description. Her five points are uh, that, there's, that there, there's actually not a housing shortage, uh, declining population growth, low birth rate, and higher death rates. Um, on the one side, and permits are meeting population growth rates, I mean, meet building permits. Uh, the number of people per household has declined, which is usually not the case when there's a shortage. Uh, the number of rental units, large numbers of, there's a large number of investor units, especially in minority neighborhoods. Investors are driving out individual buyers, or have been. Uh, low interest rates have driven up prices, uh, driving up investor incentives, although that's now changing. Um, in fact, it's going the other way. Uh, there's a mismatch of housing types and locations, the rise of remote work, and the possibility of large firms linking wages to housing prices if, they're current, if a recession occurs, uh, and because they can, um, monopsonies. Um, so if you, know, if you work for somebody and you know, they give you conditions, they don't give open negotiations, uh, I recommend that you um, click the link. Um, I have the same, I come to the same conclusions. Uh, I also talked about, um, about the, uh, the coming recession, about home records, how a gang of Wall Street kingpins, hedge fund magnates, crooked banks, and vulture capitalists suckered millions out of their homes and demolished the American dream. That's by Aaron Glantz. Um, the link again is to the C-SPAN video on this is in, is in the chat. Um, I highly recommend it. Um, it talks about how things were leveraged. I also talk, um, so in 2008, the Troubled Asset Recovery Program was enacted, promising aid to homeowners. The next year, CNBC's Rick Santanelli uh, had his rant of the year, which put the kibosh on any aid to homeowners, although there was little appetite to provide it from Larry Summers, the Larry Summers wing of the Obama economic team anyway. They did, however, say, stay behind bailing out uh, the holders of the bad paper. Let us not re repeat or rather continue to repeat the bad practices that left the economy in the doldrums. During the pandemic, the Federal Reserve had pur has purchased bad paper, but, but without benefit to those whose debts are held in those bonds. This time around, credit card balances and back rent should be forgiven when the Federal Reserve buys the bonds that hold the debt. Loans should be written off should be written down, which would stop bondholders from benefiting from issuing bonds that should never have been issued in the first place. Renters of both commercial and residential property should be offered the chance to purchase their locations and homes with assistance from government-sponsored enterprises uh, with their paper replacing the debt paper that has been securitized um, in exchange traded funds, which shall be collapsing soon. Uh, EF ETFs may take a hit, but uh, what was falsely sold as AAA paper would actually uh, become what was sold. Uh, bad landlords and Glantz demonstrates that Mr. Mnuchin and Mr. Ross are truly bad landlords. Landlords degrade their property so that the bonds that were issued from them to cash out are nowhere near the value at issue, meaning they are junk. And that is going to impact the housing market, the affordable housing market as well. We can make it better. And you know, to some extent, if we, if, if we buy those properties off and, and re refurbish them, that will be good for renters and buyers through, through housing programs. Uh, but the people who live there should get some, some benefit as well. In 2009, the, Uni the United States aided and abetted those who created the crisis. We are currently repeating the mistake. When the inevitable crisis occurs, again, doing the right thing will also help be the right be the right medicine for for the, for the economy and it's going to come soon. I talked about opportunity zones and who it left behind. I will link to that as well since there is a video about that. Um, we call it in the civil rights community Negro relocation. It's 
you know, the same thing. I'm sure people are talking about how good it is in the hearing. I disagree. Uh, again, I will link. To, I will provide a link to those statements. Uh, fair housing enforcement. Uh, there's a similar matter that needs mention. Fair housing, especially considering, uh, especially considering uh, campaign bloviating. Um, in light of recent Supreme Court rulings, including sexual orientation and sex for employment law, there is no reason to believe that this revised definition does not apply to every part of the Civil Rights Act, as well as the Federal Housing Act. Um, this is obviously before the in the 2020 election. I've got to change this in the testimony. Uh, are civil penalties enough to force compliance? Experience shows that they do, they do not. A former roommate who I got who got his Section 8 before I did, was ex exposed to possible discrimination couched in the language of credit. He complained to the housing office and the landlord caved in. And this, uh, this was only two years ago in liberal Montgomery County. It's four now, I think. Um, the, the continued need for training by Patricia, by the Patricia Roberts Harris National Housing Training Academy, where I also worked, uh, is, uh, is, a less anecdotal uh, example. Uh, when I was the Ward 3 Democratic Community Relations representative in, in the DC office of the Ombudsman, we were given a talk by the Solid Waste Management Office. Their motto was that there is no better education than a ticket. This would be equally true in fair housing as well as all other civil rights enforcement. It is time to quit talking about reform and actually start doing it, and that includes jail. Uh, Bias in housing policy. When dealing with, with federal, federal housing and income support in general, the desire for economic justice and environmentalism sometimes conflict. Anti-poverty programs are notorious for not funding those with the, with the father in the home. Uh, this is the result of both racism and the desire to limit the number of clients. In short, the zero population growth mentality has made it into housing policy. There should be no conflict here. The ZPG racist and cost control arguments are simply unworthy of American society while ending while being endemic within them all people of good conscience should resist such nonsense and I will do so with my last drying breath um, and I continue on in this vein and then and then go on to um, talk about income support programs or income security programs uh, which you can see in the linked video uh, this was shorter than I thought it was going to be which is fine um, the linked video is not short. So, um, again, thank you for your kind attention, um, and have a very pleasant day. Oh, well, I think I will say one thing, though. The surest way to help fund uh, federal housing beneficiaries, to help federal housing beneficiaries escape the need for rental assistance, uh, indeed any assistance, including bankruptcy, bankruptcy protection, is to make sure that families have adequate incomes. The entire low-income housing program, from mortgage subsidies to Section 8, uh, as well as other statutory income support benefits, could be decreased and curtailed with adequate support for families through adequate wages, training programs, child tax credits, and other elements of the Build Back Better proposals. There was one other nugget. Uh, Federal rental and, and, and purchase support should be two sides of the same equation. As with Medicare, both participants should be dual eligible for both down payment assistance and rental assistance. Um, indeed, everyone who is approved for one must be declared eligible for the other. If this were the case, uh, my family would have, would have stayed in more affordable housing than we did when we bought it. Uh, we would have had rental housing and supports instead, and you know, we might. I might still be a married man instead of a divorced one. So, um, yes, and I am now currently in, in affordable housing. That's the irony of the whole thing. Um, so, yes, um, there, are, there are multiple links in the, chat, in, in the description for multiple things. Um, if you're a member of Congress or the staff member, I hope that you've seen this. If you're a, a, just a YouTube watcher, um, Please like, share, uh, and raise a ruckus in the comments if you think um, I'm talking out of my hat, or you, if you don't, if you think the that uh, housing policy is racist or is not racist at its core. Uh, let's talk about it. I'm sure there will be. If put in those words, yes, let us let us uh, 
talk about the pro-builder bias. If you looked at the witness list, you would know what I'm talking about. So um, thank you very much. Have a pleasant day.